Okay, so what we want to do is a quick video on how to use the loop element. And I'm going to assume in this video that you know how to run a flow and what the basic terminology for that is and the basic um, elements and variables that you would use in a flow. I'm not going to go over any of that. So um, for this specific video, I'm just going to focus on how to set up a loop and when to use that and what a good use case scenario would be. So in this specific one that we have, if we look at our test account here, what I want it to do is when the account is updated, so when this account rating is updated to hot, what I want to happen is for a flow to run, find the related opportunities, and update this private box to true. So I wanted to update it on both of these. And that's the reason that we want to use a loop and not just like an update element. Um, typically, like when you do an update element, you um, it, let's say if you're just updating one thing, you wouldn't need to use a loop because you could just connect it directly to an update and just say, hey, uh, this is the one specific opportunity or whatever it is that you want to update. But in our case, I want it to find all related opportunities and make that specific update. Um, so let's go ahead and jump over to the flow again. And we'll just walk through like how to connect these um, and what each element is going to be doing. So from the very get go, this is an auto launch flow. So our process builder on the account is actually going to launch this flow. So when that um, account rating is updated to hot, our process builder calls this flow, launches it, and that will be the starting point for us. So it gets launched. Very first thing you want to do is find the opportunities. So finding the opportunities is finding all the related ones. And this works um, just like any other one that you're going to do. The only difference is you're actually going to make this selection. So instead of finding the first record, you want to find all records. And you want to store that in a record collection set. Uh, a record collection set is just a place where you can add multiple uh, values to it. So a typical variable allows one current um, value that you can add to it, and a record collection allows multiple values. Uh, the reason we're doing that is because we know that there's possibly going to be more than one opportunity associated. So in our use case, we already know that there's two opportunities um, so we want those to be stored in the same spot so that we can loop through that data or in other words, parse through that data and make a specific update. So what you're going to do is you're going to create a record, a collection. Um, in this case, since I'm grabbing all opportunities, my naming convention, I just keep super simple. I just named it all opportunities since that's what I'm grabbing. So I want to grab all opportunities and you can add fields here of like what you want to store inside there when it grabs one. In our case, all we really care to have is just the ID, which is always going to be mandatory. Um, so that is all that is required on that element. So pretty simple. What we wanted to do next is head on over to our loop. We want to connect it to the loop. The loop itself as I just mentioned, is used to parse through data. So when you have a record collection set, you have more than one piece of information that you want it to actually sort through or sift through and make some type of update. That's when you'll want to use, some, use the loop element, I should say. Um, so in this case, we add the loop element. We're going to loop through the opportunities that we just grabbed. Um, and then what we want it to do in your collection variable, it's basically asking you, okay, cool, uh, we're going to loop through some type of information. What's the information that we're going to actually loop through and parse out? That one that we just added on the get records, the all opportunities, that's the collection variable we want it to sort through. We go and grab the info, we then send it to the loop. The loop's then asking us, what do we actually loop through? Well, you're gonna loop through the one that we just grabbed and just put all those opportunity IDs inside of. So grab that one. Um, the direction here doesn't matter too much in our use case. Uh, it just basically allows you to sort through the data either from like top to bottom or bottom to top. Um, so we're just gonna leave that alone and keep it as 
start at the top and go to the very last one. The loop variable, obviously you can hover over your help text here and check out what that does. Uh, but in simple words, this is basically just saying, okay, we're actually going to loop through this information. Where do you want us to store that information as we're looping through it? So you'll create a uh, loop variable or a variable, as you know, since you've done flows before, is like a, a package or like a storing place, if you will, of where you're going to put information. You can name it whatever you want, whatever makes sense to you. So I just named mine loop all opportunities since that's what it's going to be doing at this point in time. Um, after we start looping, we actually want to make an assignment. And when I go to connect that, you'll see that it asks me uh, a question. It has a drop down here. And it's basically saying, when do you want to go to this next element? Do you want to do that for every single item in the collection? Or do you want to do that after the last app or sorry, the last item in the collection? For this one, we want to do it every single time um, it gets to a new piece of data or every item in the collection, we want it to go to this next element. So I'm going to select that, done. And now it's going to go over to our next assignment. Um, as you see what I have it titled and what I explained in our criteria, uh, we want it to assign um, that private box over here. So if we check that out, we want this private checkbox to be marked as true. So that's what the assignment element is going to do. Um, it's actually just going to grab our loop variable that we just set. So if we say loop all opportunities, it's a single record variable and it allows you to then look into something. So when you set up a single record variable like this, let's actually exit out. Let's show you what that looks like. So we have our single record variable. And when you set this up, um, it asks you, okay, it's a record type, but then it's also looking at what type of object it is. And in this case, since we're working on the opportunity, we care to update something on the opportunity. I want it to look at the opportunity. So go ahead and go to the opportunity. And when you set it up here, that's why it allows me to actually go in a step deeper. So I'm grabbing not only, oh, whoops, typed the wrong one, loop all opportunities. Not only am I grabbing this single record variable, but when you hit this dot, right, you put a period, it allows you to go a step deeper and say, okay, what do you want to look at on the opportunity? And that's when we say we want to look at the is private filled. And we want you to make that equal to true. And if I just type in true, there's a global constant you can use um, that will just mark it as a yes or a true. For anything that's a Boolean or a checkbox, you can just mark this as true by selecting this, right? So that's what this piece is doing here, this assignment. It's going to take the record variable that we set up on the loop. It's looking at the opportunity since that's what that record variable is. It's then going to go a step deeper and grab the private field, and we're going to assign that as a true value. After we've done that, we actually want to go another assignment. The reason being is that we need, since we know we're going to have multiple opportunities, we need to assign it to another uh, collection. We need to assign it to another record collection so that these newly updated opportunities can live somewhere else. If I don't do that, if I just said go back to the loop after you're done, what would happen is that this variable that we're using, this storing place, it's going to get updated every single time a new opportunity gets in place. So in other words, you would make an update and you'd say, hey, on Opportunity Hawaiian, update the private to true, then go back to the loop. Once it goes back to the loop, it's then going to find opportunity pepperoni. And then it's gonna say, mark this as true. And if th since this is our last opportunity, it would then end and we would only have the information stored in this variable for opportunity pepperoni. It wouldn't have any updates for opportunity Hawaiian. So the reason we're making another assignment 
is so that it can be added to a record collection. Um, once again, a record collection is just a place, a storing place, once again, that you can store multiple values, multiple updates, right? So that's the reason we want to send it to another opportunity and not back to the loop. So once it goes here, it's going to add that to a collection, right? So it says, you know that looped all opportunities where you just made an update um, to make the private boxes true on you know, Opportunity Hawaiian? Okay, great. Add that to a different place called looped updates, which is a record collection, so that it can be stored there. That new value, that new update can be stored in this spot. And after we do that, we actually wanna send this back to the loop. The reason we wanna send it back to the loop and not here, if I sent it here, there wouldn't really be a loop, right? Like, oh, whoops. Um, there wouldn't be um, a cycle for this to go back through, right? So. I would just say the very first opportunity would come in, we would grab that information, um, it would go to the loop, it'd grab the very first opportunity in that record collection, it'd make an assignment, add it to a record collection again, and then update it, and that would be the end of the flow. So instead of doing that, we wanna send it back to the loop so that it can grab the second or the third or the fifth or the 600th um, ID and make an update, right? So we're sending it back to the loop for that reason. And then that option that I showed you here, this actually asks you, okay, after the last item has been looped, what do you want it to do? So if I send it back here, but there's nothing else to loop, it'll say, oh, we're actually, we don't have anything left in that record collection. So let's go ahead and move to this element. Um, so that's why we have it set up that way. So we add those items to the record collection, send it back over here to the loop, um, once the loop is finished, going through our, going through this collection variable, there's nothing else left in it. It'll move to our element, which is the very last one, which is update the opportunity. So it's an update element. It's then going to come in here, and in this specific case, we can actually just tell it to update a record or a record collection. In our case, since we added it, to a record collection called looped updates. We actually just say, go ahead and update looped updates. And the reason we don't have to add like what fields need to be updated and what those values need to be for those fields is because we already did that. The assignments here already did that for us. They already said, take the is private, update it to true. So we already have those values assigned and updated essentially. They're basically just pending at that point in this record collection here to be updated. So that's the reason once you get to here, it becomes super simple to just say, go ahead and make that update um, that is pending to this record collection. And that's it. So I think the, the usual trip up is just kind of trying to understand like what this is doing. And, you know, I, I feel like, I said all this stuff like 900 times, so it could be super annoying watching this video back. But, um, you know, once again, this is just sifting through data. It's just going through a record collection set that has multiple values in it, and it's going to do something with that. So it's just saying, okay, grab the first one, loop through it, go to the second one, loop through it, go to the third one, loop through it. And it's really your assignment that's actually telling it to do something. This loop element really wouldn't do anything if we didn't have an assignment attached to it. Um, it's not going to you know, automatically make an update, as you can see. There's nothing here that's um, really having it do anything. It's just uh, an element that is there to allow you to go through multiple values in a record collection set. Um, so that's what the loop element does typically why you're always going to see, in my case, I, I don't know if I've actually done one without an assignment. I don't know if you do any of them without an assignment, because like I said, the loop is um, just basically telling you to go through a collection set and update it is actually happening here in the assignment. So loop through it, assign some type of value, assign those updated um, values to another 
collection set and go back to the loop until the very last one has been looped. And then we're just gonna update that collection set. So this one's active. So if we go back over here to our uh, test account, we actually check that out to see if what I've built works. Um, select hot, boom. And it marked this as private, which is great. And it marked this as private. So it's working the way we need to. And it's probably worth showing you uh, if anybody's hanging on at this point in the uh, <laughs> message here or the video, I should say. Uh, let's actually just go here and duplicate this. And uh, I can show you what that looks like on the process builder as well, in case you're curious to know how to set that part up of it. So let's look for the builder. And this is getting kicked off off our account. So it's actually this criteria, or this node. So update accounts. So my criteria, like I told you, is, you know, if this is changed, or I should say, if the account rating equals hot, um, go ahead and call in that flow. And if you've done flows before, you should know how this variable works. But basically, we're just setting the account ID to equal the record ID. So when we look in here, we have to, we use that as our matching, right? So find the opportunities where the account ID equals the account ID is what that means because we're populating the account ID in this record ID from the process builder. Uh, so that's how that works. That's how uh, flows work and hopefully gives you a better understanding of how to utilize those.